floating islands of meringue on a sea of chilled creme anglaise. So the first thing I want to do is measure out two cups of milk. So I actually poach the meringues in the milk and I use that to make my creme anglaise. You want to poach your meringues in a shallow pot on medium heat. And I might as well use this opportunity to infuse some flavor. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the vanilla bean paste. I'll give this a little whisk just to get it mixed in and infusing. While that's heating up, I can make the meringues. I've got three egg whites and I'll add a third of a cup of sugar while I'm whipping them on high speed. And you really want to hit a stiff peak. Right. When your peak stands upright, you know you have your stiff peak. And I just add a teaspoon of cornstarch. Now let me go check on that milk. It's very important when you're poaching your meringues in your milk that you don't actually have visible bubbles breaking the surface because that will overcook the outside of the meringues and actually break them apart. Now, a bit of a chefy trick making canals, these egg-shaped spoonfuls of meringue. And you go back and forth with two spoons, and then you just drop it into this hot milk. The vanilla-flavored milk will gently cook these whites. This is one of those tasks that when you're an apprentice, you get assigned. And at first, you're not an expert at all, and at about 239, you're a real pro. The little floating islands take about two and a half minutes on each side. And then I just use a slotted spoon and a spatula to give them a flip over so they cook on the other side. These are ready to come out. And you really get a sense of how they expand as they cook. They will shrink down a little bit as they cool. And I'll set these aside to cool completely before I pop them in the fridge. Now I'm going to use this milk as the base for my creme anglaise. Now I need to strain it, but of course it's got all that beautiful vanilla flavor worked into it. I may have to top this up just to make sure I have two cups to start with. This is milk, not half and half. Pour this into my pot, return it to medium heat, and I have six yolks and I'll add to that a third of a cup of sugar. The technique for making creme anglaise is always the same. Heat your milk or cream, stir your egg yolks and sugar together, combine the two, and cook until thickened. Go through the tempering process. Take it back to the stove. I'll switch to my wooden spoon and cook this until it's thickened. Right. I'll do my spoon test, it holds its place, so I'm ready to take it off the heat and strain it. I'll put the plastic on top and set this aside to cool down to room temperature before I chill it. I'm ready to plate, but there is one final step. Let me get my eel flottant floating in my creme anglaise sea here. Here it is cooled. There go. And I lift up two of these light as air meringues and set them. And the finishing touch, a drizzle of caramelized sugar. I start by putting a splash of water in a sauce pot, as well as a little lemon juice. This helps to keep the sugar liquefied. I'll add a third of a cup of sugar, and I'll turn this on high heat to get my sugar melting and boiling quickly. But occasionally, you want to brush the insides of the pot so that you don't get any sugar sticking to the side of the pot and crystallizing. As soon as you see the sugar turn a light amber color, you take it off the heat, and then just a drizzle right on top. Although such simple ingredients, it's an immensely complex dessert. And this is why it's one of my favorites.